Hi guys, Chris from Microsoft. In this chapter of the What's New in Windows Server 2012, uh, we're going to be covering a little bit more about Server Manager. We talked a little bit in the previous chapter about doing local server management and just getting a server, what I like to call getting it, uh, it initially configured or doing the init config on a server. Now we're going to talk about remote management. So first off, best way to explain this, I think, is to actually use a Windows 8 machine. So I'm going to go ahead and log on to a Windows 8 machine that's running in this lab environment of ours. And of course, we'll be using the illustrious Kyle Busch again, my favorite race car driver. I'm going to right click and I'm going to look on the host and see what its screen resolution is. And I can see it's 16 by 9. Now, the reason I want to know that is because I want to go full screen for the full user experience. So I'm going to go into screen resolution on this and go to 16 by 9 on the Windows 8 virtual machine. That way I can bring him up. Now, typically what you would do is install the remote server administration tools. These are a download that you can get for Windows 8. They are free. And at the moment, let me see if I can find that KB article for you real fast. That download ID is 28972. So if you're familiar with Microsoft.com forward slash ENUS forward slash download forward slash details dot aspects question mark ID equals. If you've typed a few of those in before, it's just 28972. Bing search for remote server administration tools or RSAT tools. Windows 8 would also bring you up a direct download screen. Uh, I don't know if I've got internet access in this lab set up or not. I kind of think I didn't give these guys access to the internet. Um, actually, I know I don't because I've got them on a private switch, so it's gonna it's gonna fail. So let me bring that up on the uh, host that I'm actually remoted into. Show you what that screen looks like. It's important to do that because if you, uh, you know, if you uh, look at a screen that looks like maybe it's the download tools, but it's not actually coming from a Microsoft web page. Well, you don't want to actually get malware on your system, so let's just bring that over here. As you can see, again, this is 28972, Remote Server Administration Tools for Windows 8. Uh, you've got both the 32-bit and 64-bit downloads of this. I've gone ahead and installed them on this Windows 8 machine, just so that we don't have to walk through the 20-ish minute uh, process that you go through with that. And you can see that one of the things I have in here as a result is Server Manager that we were talking about earlier. We could just also, worth talking about a couple of things that you'll see in programs and features after you go turn Windows features on and off. Prior to putting this service pack on or this, uh, this hotfix or this download rather for remote server administration tools, you're not going to see this remote server administration tools listed in here. It's not just a checkbox you can come and turn on, but after having installed it, then, then it'll be here. One thing that is new in Windows 8 that you may not have noticed before is Hyper-V is already listed even if you don't download the remote server administration tools. Therefore, breaking this out, if you just needed to install the Hyper-V management tools for a Windows 8 machine, you don't have to download anything because Windows 8 comes with Hyper-V. If you ever see Hyper-V grade out, as in the example here, that either means you're running this in a VM, as is the case with your, what you're looking at on the screen, uh, or you're dealing with a situation where perhaps you don't have VT turned on in the BIOS. To turn on the remote server administration tool so I could actually manage a Hyper-V machine, uh, either the local machine or just another Hyper-V server, or both in the environment, I just check that box without even having to download RSAT. Now the big one that we saw in the previous chapter of this series or the previous episode was number one had a big orange thing that said configure this local server. A little different on Windows 8. It's the same interface but what it's showing now is add other servers to manage. And that's because we're going to set up for remote management. When I click on this wizard it gives me the capability to put other servers in. You can also get to this wizard by right clicking on all servers and saying add servers. Brings me to the same wizard. So earlier we configured a Contoso MS1 uh, server. So I'm going to click Find. 
and I did find that and I can add this in. However, I can also look these up by DNS host name or IP address. So I could have just as easily said 10.0.0.5 and searched for it and it would also find the Contoso MS1. We've already got him added in so we don't need to actually do that. You can also import a text file. This is a line delimited format so if you ever want to just create a list of servers that you're going to have repeatedly added into Server Manager uh, you could do that. I don't think you'll probably need to do that very often because this is really a personal management solution. This is not a replacement for managing servers such as with System Center Operations Manager but this would be a really easy way for you to not only manage remote servers but also monitor them which we'll cover in just a little bit. So we're going to add this guy in. You'll notice it's going to kind of go out and oops, close. Um, we're going to go out and we're going to see a few things start to change as we add in and scan Contoso MS1. It's in progress and our screen is going to change. You notice now we have a file and storage services that we didn't have before. That's because Contoso MS1 has file uh, file server capabilities. That is what we uh, refer to over here on the left side as a server pool. We'll also have server groups which we'll cover in another uh, chapter, but a few things that we're going to see once we have added this Contoso MS1 in. When I right click on them, you can see there's a few things I can do with this guy. For instance, Windows PowerShell. So I can remotely jump straight to a PowerShell window uh, that's going to show me uh, the PowerShell on that remote machine. So this is remote PowerShelling and this gives me the capability to do a few things and we'll give it a second for it to actually get that that up and started. A few of the other things that happen, oh, there we go, it's done. So I can type in host name and you'll see that it actually returns Contoso MS1 even though I'm on Contoso Client 1, as you can see very clearly right here. And the IP configuration is the 10.105 that we configured for that server in the previous episode. Right clicking on it gives me a few other things that we can do, uh, such as starting the performance counters, removing the server from the list. When I, when I look below this, I can see events that are happening on that server. I can even come through and, and do a little bit of a query. I'm going to click this chevron over here, and I can say, well, I only want to see severities of possibly critical error, etc. And so I can even save that query and run it again later. So if I only want to see errors on that remote server, I can execute that. Give myself a little more real estate here. So now we're only seeing errors on that remote machine now. Right? We can clear the clear query like this. Below that we'll see services. So these are services that are relevant to Contoso MS1. I can right click and start a service that isn't running or stop a service that is running, such as the DCOM if it's possible to do uh, remotely, if it's a stoppable server uh, service. See if I can find one that is like the DHCP client. I should be able to restart that service. BPA is built into this as well. Right now I don't have very many roles running on the Contoso host one, but anything that is running that has a BPA associated with it, I can go ahead and kick that scan off and he'll start scanning best practice analyzer. For instance, if I had this configured as a domain controller, I could kick off BPA scans for uh, that server. You'll notice a flag came up, notifications. We had a uh, restart service. One of the services couldn't be restarted. We're going to be looking at in a little bit uh, where we could see that pop up in a, in a little bit prettier format. We also have performance counters. This is going to track the CPU usage and memory uh, capabilities or what's left of the available memory of uh, that server over time. I have the ability to change a few things like configuring the thresholds, so sustained averages over 80%, 85%, 2 megs of memory available. I can change the graph to display 7 days so I can see a trend for the service that I'm managing because right now we're talking about single server management but we'll be talking in the next chapter about multi-server management. So I can easily kick off those performance counters simply by right clicking on the server and saying start performance counters and that will begin that process and over time it'll take about a half hour but we'll start to see 
waiting for data to start actually displaying us some information right here. And this is all off of one server. Other things that we can do with, I'm sorry about the video hiccup there, just uh, expression kind of decided to stop recording all of a sudden, but we're back on. Um, other things you can do with server management, if I click on file storage services, this would give me the ability to be able to remotely manage the disks on that remote server. So I have uh, the disk management capabilities that you could get from looking at volumes and shares if I had that configured on that server. Uh, we'll talk about storage pools in another chapter, but I, I can create volumes here without actually having to log on to that local server. I can create shares, I can create um, new storage pools and other things of that nature right from in here without having to go into disk management or disk part on the remote server. Another thing that's interesting is this dashboard. So let's say that I've already added all the servers I want to manage in here. I have a heads-up display for the servers that I manage. In the next chapter we're going to talk about how relevant that can be because we're going to do multi-server remote management rather than just a single server. So check out that episode which I should be uh, getting online within a day or so here to YouTube. As always thank you for watching. This has been Chris with Microsoft. Uh, my blog is at 9z.com or the last number and the last letter. So really easy to remember. That has links to my Twitter and my Facebook and uh, the YouTube channel. I again thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next episode.